Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to hack the Sony PSP so you can play emulators like SNES, Sega Genesis, Game Boy Advance. I'm also going to show you how to add PS1 games and backups of your PSP games. This should work on any PSP model, even the PSP Go. This one here is the 3001 model, and this is probably the one you're going to find on your local Craigslist. The only issue with hacking the 3001 is after you shut the system down or it reboots, you'll have to rehack it, but it's really easy with the fast recovery. It only takes a few seconds and it's really not a problem. I leave mine on all the time. So as you can see here, I have an NES emulator, an SNES emulator, and a Game Boy Advance SP emulator. The first thing you need to do is make sure you're on the latest firmware from PlayStation. It's really easy to find. Just go to Settings, System Settings, and scroll all the way down until you see System Information. You need to be on version 6.60. If you're not, the pack you're going to download from this video will have the update included. The next thing you're going to need is a memory card if you're using a PlayStation like this. So these are Memory Stick Pro Duos, but the PSP Go has 16 gigabytes of storage built in, and that's plenty of storage for pretty much everything. I have an 8 gigabyte here, but I also purchased an adapter which allows me to use a micro SD card. I have a 32 gigabyte card in here. I have tested a 32 and a 64. They both work. I'll leave a link to this in the description. They're about 7 bucks, and it's well worth it. If you're using the adapter with the micro SD card, you're going to need to format the SD card first. So you're going to head over to system settings and find format memory stick. Yes, you want to format it. It's going to delete everything on the micro SD card, but this will allow the SD card to work with the PSP. Now we got a few basics out of the way. It's time to head over to my PC and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. We're going to download a PSP hack pack, which has everything we need to hack this unit. All right, guys, so the first thing we need to do is plug our PSP into our PC and make sure all the drivers are installed correctly. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Should automatically connect. And there we have it. Mine's listed as USB drive F. You can leave all these in here, but I don't need any music, pictures, or video, so I'm just going to delete them. We're going to download everything we need. That way I have a clean install on this SD card. Next, there's some links in the description. You're definitely going to want to read through these. These are emulators for the PSP. So we're going to scroll down a little bit. Second gen, third gen, fourth gen, fifth gen, sixth gen, seventh gen. Now, N64 and Dreamcast don't run well on the PSP. I find that NES doesn't really run well on the PSP, but the pack you're about to download does include an SNES emulator, Genesis emulator, and an NES emulator. It also includes everything you need to hack your PSP. There are no ROMs included, it's a mega link, and it's zipped up. If you want extra emulators, go to this website here, find the emulator you'd like, say Atari 2600. If you don't like this one, download Stella. Scroll down. You can find pretty much everything you need here. Now the next thing you want to do is head over to the mega link in the description and download the PSP hack pack. Download. I already have mine downloaded on my desktop, PSP Hack Pack. I'm going to go ahead and extract it. Right click, 7-zip, or WinRAR, extract. Here it is. So we have the Hack Pack here. You're also going to need some games. Now I'm going to show you where these games need to go. I can't tell you where to get the games, but if you do a quick Google search, you can find everything you need. I have Genesis game, NES, PS1, PSP, and an SNES game. I'm going to close this back down and open up the PSP hack pack. So inside of here, there's a little readme. I'm going to snap it over to the side. There's links for the firmware. Links for the custom firmware, links for the emulators. Make sure your PSP firmware is 6.60. To play PSP backups, put your .iso or .cso in the iOS folder. For PS1 games, you're not going to download a bin and queue. You're going to download something called an eBoot, otherwise known as a .pbp. If you do a Google search, you'll find every game you ever wanted. Now these are going to go in your game folder along with the image that it comes with. I'll show you what this looks like in a second. But everything you need to know is pretty much here. 
We're going to close the text file down. There's a folder inside of the hack pack. Put the two folders in the root of your PSP memory. Open this up. If you want to play PSP games, you're going to place them here. We also have a PSP folder. Inside of here is a game folder. It has everything you need. It has the 6.60 update, the SNES emulator, the custom firmware update, the Genesis emulator, the NES emulator, and your fast recovery. I'm going to snap this over to the side, and we're going to back up in our PSP hack pack. We're going to find our PSP. Mine is USB drive F. I'm just going to open in a new window. And I'm going to take the ISO folder and the PSP folder, place it right onto my PSP. We're going to close the hack pack down. Now here's my PSP. We're going to open up the PSP folder, game. Now we want to add some NES games, some Genesis games, and some SNES games. We'll add NES games first. We're going to open up Nestor. Inside of here, there's a ROMs folder. You're going to find some NES games. Just Google it. And these are where your games are going to go for NES. We're going to back up again. Pico Drive, this is our Genesis emulator. There's a folder in here called ROMs. We're going to find some Genesis games. Place them right in here. Next up, SNES. Find some SNES games. And place them right in the ROMs folder. Now I'm going to put one PSP game on here. We're going to back up to the ISO folder. Find a PSP game. I have Ratchet and Clank. This is a .ISO. And we're going to place it right in the ISO folder. Give it a little while to transfer over. These are big games and the PSP memory is really slow. We just finished up transferring a PSP game to our internal memory on the PSP. We're going to back up. Go back to PSP. Inside of the game folder, if you want to play PlayStation 1 games, you're going to need to find the PBP files online. So I have a couple in here. It's going to come zipped. It's going to look just like this. When you extract it, you'll get another folder. Inside of this folder, you should have the SLU. This will be numbered differently. Inside of here, you'll have the eboot.pbp. You should also have an image. I'm going to take both of these and place them right inside of my game folder. All right, so now I have a PlayStation 1 game, a PSP game, an NES game, a Genesis game, and an SNES game. Now it's time to move back to the PSP and install the custom firmware. This is really simple to do. You can always uninstall it. But remember, if you reboot your system, you'll have to use the fast recovery. I'll show you how to do that also. Let's move back over to the PSP and get this thing hacked. All right, so now that we have everything on the PSP, we're going to head over to Game. Scroll down to Memory Stick. If we click here, we can see everything we have installed, except for the PSP game. That's because the PSP needs to be hacked first in order for us to see that. If you don't have the latest version 6.60, you can run this update here. Mine's already updated, so it's not going to do anything. But if you're on older firmware, it should update pretty quickly. If you're already updated to the latest firmware, very easy to hack. We're going to head to the Pro Update option. We're going to press X. It's going to load up for us. You should see a menu here. It's really easy to follow. Just read through it. I'm going to try to get a little closer to the camera and get this thing in focus. So press X to launch CFW. That's what we want to do if we want to hack our unit. Press triangle to uninstall CFW. That's what you want to do if you want to unhack your unit. I'm going to run the custom firmware by pressing X. It should only take a few seconds. Now we have to press X again. It's going to reboot the unit and our PSP is hacked. That's it. After the PSP reboots, we should be able to go to our game folder and we should be able to see our backed up PSP games that we put in the ISO folder. Now, if your unit's not hacked, you won't see them. We're going to scroll down to memory card. And there we have it. 
Ratchet and Clank. This is a PSP game that I added to the ISO folder. I know my unit's hacked now because I can run this game. We can also run emulators. I'm going to go ahead and start a Sega Genesis game, so I'll go back up to the Pico Drive emulator. We'll press X to launch it. Give it a few seconds to start up the emulator. Now this is one of the things I hate about hacking the PSP and running emulators on it. Each time you want to run something, you have to start a different application unless you're using RetroArch. But this Pico Drive emulator runs really well. There are settings included also. We're just going to scroll down to ROMs. I'm going to find the game I put on here, which was Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I'm going to start this. It's going to load the game. And we're now playing. Most of the emulators can be exited by pressing the PlayStation button. Do you want to quit the game? Just go to yes. I don't want to quit it right now. I want to play. There's also options if you press select. So you can go down to configure controls or change options. A lot of the games run really good with these stock settings, but you might have to configure some of this stuff for different games. There's also the option to turn VSync on. This will eliminate the tearing, but it does compromise the FPS. So I leave mine off. A little bit of tearing here and there is not too bad for a Sega Genesis game on a small screen like this. The games run really good with this Pico Drive emulator. Sound is decent. But some games are going to lag. You got to remember that. This is not perfect emulation, just like everything else in the world. So if your battery dies or you turn the system off, you'll have to rehack it. I'm going to go ahead and turn mine off. I'm just going to hold my power button up for a few seconds until the unit turns off. Need to try to get this camera right. I'm going to go ahead and turn my unit back on. I'll just hold the power button again. Now, after we start this back up, we're not going to be able to play any of those emulators until we hack it again. But the hack pack does include a fast recovery. This will allow you to just run the fast recovery. It'll take a few seconds and your PSP will be hacked again. I just want to show you here that we will not be able to run any of these and our PSP game is missing because the unit's not hacked after we restarted. So I'm going to try the Pico Drive emulator again. This game cannot be started. The data is corrupted. It's not corrupted. It's just that the PSP isn't hacked. We're going to run the fast recovery. Press X. Give it a few seconds to do its thing. And we're done. We can go back to our memory stick. My PSP game is showing up, and I can start one of these emulators if I want to. I'll go to SNES 9X. Now all of these emulators should look pretty similar. You should have a ROMs folder where we put our games. We'll go to ROMs, and I'll start Killer Instinct. So like I mentioned in the video, the NES emulator doesn't seem to run very well on here, but you do have a lot of other stuff. There are Atari emulators, there's Neo Geo emulators, CPS1, CPS2. All you need to do is search for it, and it might run on the PSP. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. There are literally thousands of videos on how to hack the PSP. There's a ton of websites. If you need any help, just type it into Google and somebody has an answer for you. This has been around for a long time and it's a good little handheld still to this day. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great content. And like always, thanks for watching. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you guys that I do have a Patreon, and if you're interested in helping the channel out, I really appreciate it. I also offer monthly Patreon giveaways, so go ahead and check it out. Links in the description.